Thank you very much for joining us. Our sign language interpreter is Marisha Uwiti. Now, it was a day when Kenyans closed ranks, putting aside political and religious differences to honor the soldiers who fell during the terror attack at Elade inside Somalia. As President Uhuru Kenyatta and court leader Raila Odinga joined others in a special remembrance ceremony here in Nairobi, Kenya Defense Forces officers made a rare visit to Baringo County and other places in the country to pay a visit to the families that lost their loved ones in the Al-Shabaab attack. As KTN's Camp Chair Menza now reports, a village in Baringo woke up to the sight of men in uniform arriving in droves to find the families. We met these officers, some from the KDF at the area's chief's office in Sacho. And when we approached them, they told us they were in the area to deliver some notification to a family. Matters concerning the whereabouts of one of the KDF soldiers, though they were not willing to let us accompany them into the villages. We later managed to find a family which they had visited. Mary Kobilo Kiprop and some of her relatives here at Kiberege village, Baringo Central, tell us that they have just received sad news of their kin's demise from the KDF officials. They say he is one of the KDF soldiers who paid the ultimate price. Mary is the wife to the deceased. <laughs> But they did not know the whereabouts of the deceased. The family says the last time they were together was in November 2015. He had not even informed them of his trip to Somalia. They say the area has three KDF soldiers, and apart from Wilson, they still do not have information on the two others. Mary says they have now been requested to set a burial dead. And in Gilgil, another family is urging the government to end their anxiety by availing more information on their kin's fate. Tungerundi nyumbani, tungoje semeji yetu, tukua tuna, tuna hope, tumeambiwa na wako na ukwedi, mtu yetu yuko salama. Kamche menza KTN News, Baringo County. Well, that was in Baringo, and here in Nairobi, the opposition and the ruling coalition joined together to pay respect to the fallen soldiers and to commiserate with the injured ones who are still recuperating at the Forces Memorial Hospital. KTN's Timothy Oteno was there. The head of state arrived at the Defense Forces Memorial Hospital just a few minutes past 10 o'clock Friday morning on a mission. One that led him straight to the hospital's ward to meet face to face with the brave men and women of Kenya's Defense Forces who risked their lives for the sake of the nation and were lucky enough to make it back home after last Friday's attack by the Al Shabaab at the El Ade base inside Somalia. The soldiers nursing several wounds and some still visibly shaken met for the first time their commander in chief since the attack, which occurred on the dawn of January 15th, leaving an unknown number of casualties. The government remains guarded on the exact number of the fallen heroes. And soon enough, the ceremony commenced with the reveille sounding the grounds of the hospital in honor of the fallen soldiers. Everyone has been united in grief and a sense of nationalism following one of the worst attacks ever witnessed by the KDF inside Somalia. One, that the forces here swear will never happen again as the families of those brought back home prepare for burial. We have also 
contacted their families of the affected soldiers to assist in proper identification and arrangements to give our heroes a befitting send-off. Leaders appeared defiant in the face of calamity, vowing to remain steadfast in the fight against a common enemy. We are unbowed Kenyans who are determined to protect our way of life and we shall not be cowed and we shall fight this fight and win it. Like we overcame Westgate and Westgate today the mall is open. Like we overcame Garissa and the university today is open. So we shall overcome this as well. As a country, we refuse to cry. We are here to celebrate the heroism of our soldiers. We want you to believe with us in these three words. We shall overcome. The commander-in-chief of the armed forces remained adamant that the Kenyan troops will not pull out of Somalia even after last week's attack where bombers used vehicle-borne improvised explosive devices to infiltrate the Kenyan camp. Your fellow soldiers in the army and in the air force are in Somalia conducting search, rescue and recovery operations which are continuing. They have recaptured the Elade base and are pursuing the enemy deep in their hideouts. We are the Republic of Kenya. We are the Kenya Defense Forces. We stand firm. And so the head of state led the nation in honoring the souls of the fallen soldiers, promising to avenge the deaths by taking the war on terror to the doorstep of the terrorists and fishing them out. The head of state insisting that the country will remain unbowed in its fight against terror in the region, even as one of the worst attacks to ever hit the Kenya Defense Forces on foreign soil continues to raise questions as to the number of casualties. But the Jubilee administration, led by President Uhuru Kenyatta, says that our mission in Somalia is not yet done and they will continue until the threat has finally been vanquished. Timothy Otieno, KTN News, Nairobi. Now to a story from the Kenyan courts this afternoon, an amendment to the Judicial Service Commission Act, which gives President Uhuru Kenyatta powers to appoint the Chief Justice and Deputy CJ has been suspended. Now the High Court Judge Isaac Lenaola at the same time restrained the Judicial Service Commission from commencing recruitment of top judicial officers set to replace CJ Willie Mutunga and his deputy Kalpana Rawal. The temporary order, Justice Lenaola ruled, will remain in force pending hearing of a suit lodged by the Law Society of Kenya on February 3rd contesting the amendment. The court will hear an application by parties whether the suit should be heard by a bench on February the 12th. As LSK had gone to court arguing that the amended law is unconstitutional as it purports to give President Kenyatta powers that he does not have under the constitution through lawyer Nzamba Kitonga. LSK wants the law suspended on grounds that it violates article 166 of the constitution. Now, a teacher at Nyeri's Gidhuka Primary School has surrendered to police after a pupil died soon after corporal punishment. Now, the school has, however, maintained that the boy was a sickly child and may have not died from the punishment. The pupil's relatives are demanding justice as police await results of a post-mortem exam. KTN's Carol Nderi has more. <laughs> Gidhuga Primary School, located in the heart of Karundas in Kenny East of Nyeri County, this is a standard six classroom. And this is where Kevin Kagurua would be sitting on a regular school day. His mathematics book lies on his desk untouched. Kevin Kagurua is no more. It is alleged that he was caned to death by his teacher. Claims we sought to verify from the head teacher of Gidhuga Primary School, Joseph Karume. Mwalimu alikuwa amesha igia kwa dalasa na watoto wale walikuwa ameshelewa alipoigia uh, kuna mtoto mmoja huwa ana panic sana when shouted at huyo dio Kevin Kagura na mwalimu sasa dio ali shout na inasemekana the five of them aliwaadhibu kidogo 
Sasa yule mmoja kwa bahati mbaya die inasemekana aliaguka. Karome claims that the boy had been unwell and in his view it is not the canine that led to his demise. He goes ahead to show us what he terms as the small cane used by the teacher, one Isaac Geshoka, that could not have possibly caused any fatality. Watoto wanasema alishapwa. Na lakini walikuwa wengi, walikuwa watoto watano. Sio kuchapwa hasa kwa sababu hata mkiona ile kamuti, watoto wao wanasema aligonga gongwa nayo. Watoto walikuwa na hiyo mti kwa darasa. Eh, kwa hivyo sio kupigwa. Sasa ni kupanic. Eh, Hata inasemekana alikuwa ameaguka on Sunday kwa masaa matatu pale kwa kanisa. Hapana. 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 Na hana ugojwa mwingine. Na ni nini nikaa nake naye ama mtoto mdogo. A seemingly bitter and devastated Gladys Njoki, the boy's grandmother refutes the head teacher's claims that the late Kevin Kaguru had been sickly. Na hiyo mtoto wa nini wa kijana yako hana nini ugojwa ingine na hana kuaguka mara ingine nisikio ni saa hiyo ninasikia ati naagukaga and goes ahead to ask if the head teacher's claims are true that the boy had fallen sick the previous day why weren't his parents informed now on monday tukiwa pe mtoto yule akaaguka pale karibu that 5 minutes kwa hivyo siwezi sema kama ni mwalimu alishapa ama si mwalimu lakini mtoto wenyewe alikuwa na shida kwa nini ukiona siku hiyo hiyo jumatatu akiaguka kwa nini unanyamasa ku, ku, kuabia wasasi wake the late kagurua's grandfather solomon kagurua also says to his knowledge his grandchild had no problem known to them anja kuwa na, 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 na problem ya kuaguka bila watu wanasema ati anaguka tunakaa na hapa miaka na miaka the boy's family accuses the school of a cover up. Gichukua jukumu ya inafulani waite baba yao kuja mtoto yako anafanya hii na wetu mpeleke hospitali kutoka saa 8 hiyo mpaka saa 11 mtoto yuko hapo iko kwa sakabuni. Tunaweza kufikiria namna iko njama inafulani kwa hiyo watu wanafikiri. In a recent development however Kenny OSPD Michael Mbaluku has confirmed that the said teacher surrendered himself to the police Friday afternoon and admitted to caning the child lightly. Mbaluku has said that the postmortem that was to be conducted today has been postponed to Monday. The family wants justice to take its course if indeed the teacher will be found guilty. Carol Derry Kenny News Kenny Nyeri County.